Bandericon, Captain's Log. Evil Within, two-parter. Part one, Evil Within one. Yeah, that sounded complicated. So, uh, the first Evil Within game came out in, uh, I think, 2014. Uh, and released on, uh, as I remember, it came out on PC, PlayStation 3, and Xbox 360. Uh, and at the time was widely hailed as like a Resi 4 clone, because if we're being honest with each other for a minute, Resi 4 was incredible, and many, many games since then have taken their lead off of it. However, in my personal opinion, Evil Within was its own kind of special awesomeness. Now, you are speaking to somebody who has played uh, Resident Evil 4 when it was originally the GameCube release and played it to absolute extinction, uh, played the Mercenaries mode, five stars a lot, got the hand cannon, got the Chicago typewriter, did the works. Uh, I'm actually kind of holding myself before I try and play the remake because I know even though by and large it's regarded as the superior piece in that they improved over the stuff that was kind of a bit lackluster in the first game, I still don't know that I can handle it. This aside. The Evil Within Game 1, uh, it starts off a little bit rocky, it has a little bit of a um, kind of, you get a walk through, you're a Detective Castellanos from Crimson PD. And yes, the, unfortunately the dialogue reads like terrible Japanese schlock, like most of them do. Anyway, you have a brief chase around the block with Chainsaw Man while injured, and you do a bit of the hide-and-seek. And then the game goes into, in my opinion, a really tightly designed linear sequence where you explore, I think it's something like 14, 15 chapters of gameplay. And... It's nothing short of fucking marvellous in my goddamn opinion. Um, the design is beautiful, the atmosphere is fantastic. Um, even though, effectively, you kind of wander your way from A to B, headshotting your way through the opposition, the game still is difficult enough to present a challenge and can often hit that point where you decide, shit, I have to run away and get a backup idea, and sometimes the enemy will just be like, corner you, and you're fucked. Especially in the sort of late to mid game where you have certain enemies like, um, I'm thinking the uh, main bad person whose name I can't remember, Sosumi, he has a little bit of an XB, who, uh, XB character who will just instant death you, but you can get the drop on him and one shot him with, I think, a sufficiently high powered weapon, crossbow, rifle, etc. Um, I think his name was Ruvik. Yeah, I think, I'm pr pretty sure that's it. So you, you basically get to headshot this Ruvik XB who kind of teleports behind you, not really. He's like, uh, nothing personal kid, and instant deaths you. And the death animations in this game are kind of a Resident Evil standard of being fantastically gory, and it's wonderful, and I love it. And, um, yeah, it, it, the game gives you a couple of or opportunities, uh, or should I say, it gives you alternatives. You can sneak your way around and... Uh, backstab enemies to save ammo which is reasonably speaking given how scarce ammo is on the whole is the best way to do it in my opinion or you can go guns a blazing though I have no idea how barring some kind of pure melee build and the game does have a melee option it's just really really ineffective it would be like a, a first time playthrough of one of the classic resi games with a knife only build uh, you know, you're kind of just chipping away enemies. It's it's entirely doable, and you can even upgrade it, but it's still not good. The game also has this, and it doesn't make it into the second game, and much to its detriment, is interesting mechanic where, for some reason, sparking a match on the enemies uh, when they're on their down state catches them ablaze, and you can use it really cleverly. Like, you can knock piles of enemies into each other using explosives or melee or other effects, and then set them on fire which insta-kills them, uh, no backseas, and you can save an absolute shit ton of ammo doing that. Um, overall, e even though it's a pretty basic and linear experience, uh, it's fantastic. And the bosses, uh, barring one or two exceptions, I don't remember the wolf, uh, giant wolf boss being that amazing, but the bosses are clever, 
and they really make you work and guaranteed the first time around they will kill you several times until you figure them out um, there's one boss which primarily relies on like a really I, I, I would hate to say uh, unfair, but it is, but it isn't. It's a camouflage mechanic. They blend into the background really well, and it's cool. Um, and then there's one boss, which is just some kind of walking spider tank, which, after you piss it off enough, will just hunt for you and insta-kill you, so you've, you've got a small window where you just need to unload onto it as much as you can. It becomes a little bit of a damage race, almost. Um... On the whole, the, the gameplay is, it's I think it's a tightly packaged experience that needs to be gone through in one playthrough, like one good sit down start to finish. And I can't ask much more of a game. The graphics are on point and I mean, it, it came out in 2014, so you need to give it a little bit of a break, but I feel that everything was kind of really nice. The textures were great. The art style is special in that way where the kind of like one or two people have had their kind of hand on the um, artistic style that they were going through from start to finish. The main, I think in fact the most impactful thing is the main enemies in the way that they kind of had this aesthetic of having almost a um, Hellraiser-esque aesthetic to them where they've got like medical equipment and barbed wire and jagged shards of metal shoved through various parts of their head and extremities. Uh, while some of them call for your death and other others of them beg for mercy or, or, or cry for forgiveness and that's that's grand it's fantastic um, I don't know in Resident Evil 4 for example which is the game it was most clearly compared to uh, most of the main fodder enemies were just Spanish peasants even late game I think at some point they just put on a beret and a bandolier of bullets and that was more or less it and yeah you had special enemies like the regenerator or that weird kind of centipede thing that chased you through that mine shaft but those were boss creatures if we're being deadly honest with each other all of the evil within characters felt unique and kind of cool and threatening to me and that kind of variety is what keeps a game lively in terms of a soundtrack I can't really remember and to me that just means it didn't really sync well enough though somebody's probably going to slate me like crazy for that the first evil within game is still absolutely worth your time and um it's 15.99 english pounds and it goes on offer very frequently uh, there's nothing you can really go wrong with that it's worth the buy i think i spent probably around 15 something hours on it which means a pound an hour which is damn good value um, I can't say much regarding the DLCs and I wouldn't buy the absolute bullshit season pass slash agony crossbow DLC that was just something made because they were trying to get money so go play it today's call to action is put this shit on your wish list and wait for a sale and then if it's at a price point you think is available for your budget to buy it. Anyway, peace out.